Okay, we are at live at the Secret Lab B Hidden Base. What are we? Mm, hidden Base Three. Hidden, hidden, hidden Base, base three. three. Yeah, y'all don't know what the other two. <laughs> We're are, at the so. lab right next to the Secret Lab, which has now become the podcast studio with our fancy new lighting. We do have some new lighting. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. audio paneling. Yeah, I uh, mean audio foam. That's right. Our Nicely. sound will hit the wall and disperse evenly instead of bouncing right back onto our microphones and causing an echo. So fantastic. That's, Really, I mean, this is big upgrades, guys. All right, but we're here yes. today. We're right, going to talk about so. something. <laughs> uh, let's play. We just did that whole huge, awesome convention. It's a convention, right? Expo? Expo. expo. Let's play gaming it's, expo. It's expo. So it's an expo. Gaming All right. Is an expo a convention, though? I have no uh, idea. Wow, guys. We're getting into some deep stuff already, and I think we, we need to dial it back. <laughs> right. And talk, I, talk about... All right, so let's play. Uh, we did a live podcast there where we talked about, hey... Well, first, I want to say I'm Chris Delp, community liaison. All right. Let's I want to introduce the CEO. That's CEO. me. I'm Corey Hyden. Yeah. Been here before. Other community liaison, Arthur let's, Williams. Let's go back to Corey Hyden, though. I hear he's the CEO. I yes. am still the CEO. CEO. Since last time. Right. <laughs> we, we already discussed that naming convention and why, whatever. <laughs> go check our Let's Play Gaming Expo podcast one. <clears throat> so, yeah, we're here to talk about a ridiculous, ridiculous weekend. The Let's Play Gaming Expo happened last weekend at uh, Irving Convention Center. Um, well, let's, let's give a quick shout to the videos we recorded when we were there because mm-hmm. the arcade mm-hmm. was amazing. Like the walkthrough, I was watching the walkthrough earlier today that we did, and it's just like, wow, there's so many great arcade games that show up at this expo that like everyone should go just for that. I mean, there's lots of other cool stuff, but that alone is good enough to justify the ticket price. And the um, tickets are really inexpensive. So next year, if you're looking for something to do in late summer to beat the heat, no, it's it's really awesome. Um, and w- they probably had 25 different things there that I could have happily spent my entire weekend really? doing. Yeah. yeah, I mean they had a QuakeCon one like throwback <laughs> land center. You could literally sit there and play Duke Nukem 3D on land together. Like P450s or something. Correct. It's in a incredible. darkly lit room <laughs> with like 90s stuff on the walls. They straight up recreated QuakeCon 1. I don't know if anyone actually went in that room, but I did, and it was awesome. I did, and it was really cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I didn't stick around too long because, like you said, there was a bunch of stuff to see. Uh, yeah. I, told, I have to look to see if I was at QuakeCon 1. Uh, there was a... It was a 96, right? No, I, was I, I wasn't there. there in 96. I went in 98. Uh, was my first one. There's a role playing board game area. So, like, everybody had Renaissance Festival gear on, and there were like tavern y. There's a tavern motif to it all. Like, no. an old, old, you know. I went to 97. Sorry. Nice. You, you made it to, to the first no, one? No, no, no. That's 96 one. was the first one. Okay. 97, because that was the first time I met Dan Ricks Hammonds, the guy who eventually won it. Okay. Um, and I, it was really funny because, you know, he was winning like two thousand five thousand dollars but i was like this guy's a professional athlete and i love him uh-huh. i'm gonna be like him when i grow up it was really neat did you guys um, get any Qu- uh duke nukem 3d in no i mean quake 2 is still the game i mean quake 2 i mean there was quake with net code but quake 2 was the big game for a long time um right. and, and did well until quake 3 came out and then quake 3 was the game forever yes, yes. i mean quake 3 crushed um in mm-hmm. terms of multiplayer land action so um yeah no i was uh uh, but I was a I was a top ranked Quake two player for a minute, and so it was it was really fun to go That's to that. That's cool. Um, all right, so anyways, recreating and <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's they play had, all they that, had that. Stuff. lots of great stuff. Uh, like you said, a ridiculously large uh, arcade uh, provided by ourselves and also Rogue Synapse, who is the doc, right. uh, private collector in the Dallas area, and we usually do team up for Let's Play Game Expo. Add a ton of games there. I don't remember what the total amount of arcades that there. Were, I think they said around 100, 110. That's um, so ridiculous. Which is really cool, just as like a mobile, as part of an event. Like, you'll you'll hear about big gaming expos that are all about the arcade. Right. But this is like the arcade is just one aspect of many aspects of of a convention. So I mean that that, uh, that would really be cool. like if you just take that arcade that was there that weekend and transplant it into any other region of the the country. You know, it might be the best arcade in that entire region. Like, just the mobile one. Certainly if you're a gamer. Like, that's that's the biggest thing that I love about it. It's it's not, like, about curating to make sure you 
hook people and get them in and draw them in. It's about here are like the coolest games ever. It's the games that are so gamers. cool we can't even put out normally. Right. Well, yeah, right? there's plenty of games there that we wouldn't put out just for numerous reasons. But Gals they're panic. Gals panic. Hardcore gamer games. Yeah. Um, and I mean, almost all the Estel stuff, especially the early '80s stuff, is like that. Where as an arcade nerd, I walk through and I'm like, wow. I just want to live here. Right. And I mean, we have most of the games, but the nice thing about Estel's collection is it's just, he brings it straight from his home where it's had like, you know, some of these games might've had 30 total plays the whole year. Um, and he just brings them and it, it's just, it's this beautiful thing where you're playing these very, very um, unplayed arcade games uh, from his house that are, you know, like his space tool was, I, it looked basically the exact same as it did last year, whereas our space tool spent a year on the floor and we kept repairing the components, but you can slowly see it kind of wearing down. All of his stuff is, is pretty much mint because, he, you know, he's playing it, but that's it. That's who's playing it. Right, and he's, he's got 15 or 20 games he brings out every time that I have never seen outside of his collection. Like... So rare. Well, and I mean, I mean we have some rare stuff too. But he like, made himself. That's how. <laughs> and it's true. That's how rare it is. And, but the ones that he makes, like uh, Space Paranoids, right. I believe is the name of it. The uh, the game it- from Tron. So, so it's the game that, that that Kevin Flynn has the world record on, or breaks the world record on, because he magically yeah, shoots yeah, yeah. shoots one guy, one regulator, and, and or whatever. Everyone it is. cheers. So it's I yes. mean, clearly he did something good. Right. It's so good that you should like take a pic clip of that and then build your entire community group around <laughs> nothing but that. Um, but he actually made a version of that game, and I would say it's just as playable as it is in the in the movie. Like it's it, like it doesn't look like it's the best game, except it looks like it's the best game if they, if it, no gameplay at all basically. Right. And, and that's that's kind of where we're at. Was he the guy that made the uh, the Disco Diamond? Uh, shooter, which I can't remember, it was a cave shooter. It was a cave. It was um, what was that? Uh, Dang Gun Fiveron or Fiveron Dang Gun or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, it's disco shooter, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that was actually I think um, I it, was, it, was, it was one of Vestal's cabinets. But I mean, most of Vestal's stuff nowadays, like in the '90s, I think he was building it. Most of that is now a group <laughs> of guys that get together and, and build these crazy cabinets. That's cool. Um, it's a big and, hobby. And yeah, it was, I mean, that was really fun, really neat. I mean, because it was like all reflective and then it actually had a disco ball on top. Yeah, like. And it, it was, you know, playing this, the disco cave shooter. So, like, yeah, it, it was looked so like well. the uh, sides were just the paneling of a disco ball just stretched right. out. It was incredible. <laughs> it was really cool. Um, so, I mean, Let's Play had a lot of amazing stuff. And I guess while we're here, really quick, besides our other Let's Play videos that you should go watch, you should go ahead and click subscribe and, like, mm-hmm. join our channel. Hit that bell icon, hit it hard, and hit <laughs> it. And. Odd number of times. Odd number is the important part. Right. You want it clicked on so you can get those notifications. Subscribe. And also the podcast is available wherever wherever you might get podcasts. So you might be listening to us on iTunes. They haven't told me the numbers. But, I, I mean, they, if they're listening on anything else, they're missing this brand new beautiful lighting yes. that we have. So they but they're should, enjoying they should the go to sound. You. Right. The, the, the new sound paneling. Uh, right. So, yeah, I mean, we're they upload it to everything. Um, I mean. It's, it's fun to, for us to record, and you should subscribe, get more content like this. But let's play. Uh, all right, so we talked about the arcade. What was your favorite part besides the arcade, and not the tournaments? Because we're going right, to talk about right. tournaments well, for a yeah. while. So besides the arcade, besides the tournaments, what did you like the best? Well, I have a reasonable-ish uh, console collection of games. And I kind of enjoy going to these just to look around, see if there's something that I want. And I always try to buy at least one or so gag gift for my girlfriend. And this time I picked her up. He big timed everybody and, and talked about his girlfriend on stage and Mario Maker too. We gotta get to that. <laughs> Don't let me f- forget about that. But continue. <laughs> I picked up a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for Game Gear. But the best thing that I did. Oh, I had that game when I was a kid. I have no idea if it's good or not. Yeah, uh, it's okay. All right. It exists. But, so when I was a kid, I had a copy of Final Fantasy III and Super Nintendo that I got right when it came out. And there were a whole bunch of glitches with Realm Sketch Command. If you haven't played the game, you have this character that can. Uh, make a little copy of an enemy, and it'll do an attack and then disappear. Well, you have a character in your party that can leave the party and come back. When he comes back, you get to do one action on this character. And this is the easy way to tell if you have a glitched copy. You use the uh, the clone enemy command sketch on this guy when he comes back, and it'll corrupt all the data. Oh, uh, nice. I lent my cart to someone else, and uh, you can do a lot of fun things with the glitch. But anyway, I lent my cart to someone else. And he moved away, so I lost it. And I was thinking, you know, I would like to have a game, uh, have that game with the glitch. I've got, like, a couple copies since then, but neither of them have the glitch. So I looked around and found a couple of dealers that had Final Fantasy III. I'm like, hey, 
here's this story about this glitch. I'm looking for a copy. Do you mind if I test it? And so I tested all six copies of the game they had at the expo. None of them had that glitch. Wow. So I guess it's more rare than I thought, which... Ugh. Oh, well. <laughs> for me, um, I, I touched on it a little bit. It was the tavern board game area, and it was so compelling that I forced myself to not go up there because you would have lost me as an employee. <laughs> Everybody would have lost me for the entire weekend because I would have found... And, and that was right next to the indie games area, which is the other part that I should, should highlight. Um, so they're right next to each other. There's an indie board game there. There's indie video games there right in the middle of their development cycle. So they can see some cool new stuff. Some some just, I mean, I don't want to call it homebrew. It's just like, but it is, you know, a development team of one or two. And they're putting a <coughs> lot of handcrafted love into these these uh, items. And, uh, man, I would just grab the nearest deck building card game that I'd never heard of. <laughs> and me and Sarah would go sit in the Renaissance um, tavern themed board game area and go to town for the whole weekend and that's that's we've done that so many times um yeah i I loved it so much but i think in particular the motif there the attention to detail of making it be a comfortable and interesting area to play board games as opposed to just a large area to play board games which it was that as well um was really nice and a, a a major surprise for let's play game expo which i think of you know primarily video games when I think of that. Well, I think uh, the most interesting thing that I saw was the uh, the UFC girl. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> we definitely took a picture of that. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, that was weird. I don't know how it appeared. But no, what was really amazing is at Let's Play, they went all out like on their theming. They put a ton of work into some really small stuff that you wouldn't necessarily notice, but it was like a really polished convention and expo or whatever it was. It was. Um, really, really cool. All right, so let's see. Uh, all right, let's get to the tournaments. We'll just talk about them. So, all right, so we, we sent, uh, we sponsored three players to to get into the uh, the tournaments. It was uh, Chris Wilson, who's been a guest on the podcast, um, multiple times Spring Series champion. His brother, Daniel Wilson, whom has streamed for us at the... Um, National Video Game Museum events, including the James Bond event, and the first one where he streamed Mega Man, which comes back into play. Um, <laughs> and Dan, uh, sorry, Dylan Smith, whom I don't believe has ever been on the podcast. He's been featured on a Game of the Week. You can find him on the Atari Liberator Game of the Week. Atari Force Liberator, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, so he that's wins, he's the player there. He wins almost all of her... Puzzle Night tournaments, Correct. which we'll come right. back to in a little bit. Dylan, of course, we've talked about him before. He's really good at picking up new games really fast and, and getting like really good at them in a, in a very short period of time. Yeah. Whereas Chris Wilson and Daniel Wilson are kind of like, they've been playing games forever. They have their own Twitch, Multitab, Mugen, I believe. Yes, um, yes. And, I mean... Might be Mugen, Multitab, I can't remember. That, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, I mean... So, like, both the Wilson brothers, they play a ton of games. Dylan Smith also plays a ton of games, but he's also really, really good at new stuff, um, which I always thought was really cool. Um, All right, so we invited them to play with their free play shirts on uh, during the weekend. Me and Arthur were there, and and really buoyed by that, like, the entire team free play crowd that was in the city at the time pretty much descended upon... Uh, Let's Play Game Expo. So whether it was a member of that squad of five or the extended cast, like everybody there, it seemed, was was a member of our our group of uh, gaming nuts. And and it feels like with with Spring Series, um, with our series of gaming tournaments on multiple games, and then later uh, our actual arcade championships, which is a multi-game format as well, we've created this type of player that is perfect for this type of tournament or structure of tournament where you just play... This game, that game, every game. Right. We've kind of been training a, a small team uh, inadvertently. Inadvertently. But, but definitely <laughs> they have had, they've had to play a lot of cool games and we've been, you know, the ones pushing that. So um, we bring the three players. We have you all there. Um, and yeah, we have a bunch of other free play people showing up. Lots of cool free play shirts were there. And that was really neat to see, right? Like you look around and you see different people in free play shirts across the like tournament floor the, yes the vendor floor really really cool um all right so what events were they hosting what were the turn- main tournaments at let's play this year all of them let's see we had uh the trophied ones were mario maker which we should get back to tetris which was a qualifier the nes tetris right. They had a NHL 94, which I believe did not happen, even though we were standing right yeah. there. We were happy to take that trophy. <laughs> um, 
Virtual Boy Virtual Hyper Boy Fighting. Hyper Fighting, which I still can't see from. Uh, <laughs> we had a Kirby's Air Ride. And what else did we get? Uh... The Wizard Tournament. The Wizard Tournament. The big Wizard whole, Tournament. That's we the big one. Had, a, had one where you could win your own arcade cabinet. Right. right. Move, annually. A Neo it Geo a, Challenge. Yeah. Yes. There's a Neo Geo Bust Move 2 one slot. I think that's most of them, if right. not all of them. Yeah. So quite a few <clears throat> um, turn, uh, trophies available for many of them. Um, a cabinet for one of them. Big Wizard Prizes for another one. Uh, so we had everybody competing in everything. And uh, we went on a killing spree, pretty much. Uh, I think Mario Maker deserves the, the stage first. All right, first. we'll start Mario Maker. So uh, Qualifying round. The premise of this tournament was um, they were going to get a bunch of people who you know didn't really know how to play Mario, Mario Maker, and everything, and let them play brand new levels for the tournament, right? Right. So Reasonably challenging levels, but yeah. not superiorly challenging. If yeah, that makes any uh, sense. So, so, not, so the not, not, not the like death kill yourself impossible levels. Correct. But challenging nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Levels so, that you're so probably not going to make it through r- r- one shot right off the bat. So the qualifying round, tell me about it. So the first the first round was on I, I did it on Saturday, but I think you also could have done it on Friday. I'm not 100 sure. The top eight competitors uh they they let you familiarize yourself with this level, and then they'd give you uh three minutes to beat the level. And whatever whatever your time was at the end was uh, th- they give you three minutes worth of time to attempt the level and if you beat it and want to keep playing you're welcome to and however many the most seconds you had left on the clock uh that's your actual time i during the three minutes i beat it uh three times and the f- the the last time was my last attempt because i was running out of the three minutes and i scored exactly one second behind the leader which was dylan smith uh, i was in second place going into it I expected Dylan Smith to win the whole competition, and I got text saying, be here on Sunday at 11 or 12 or whatever time, and I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't know who else was in it. Yeah, so that was the qualifying rounds. Uh, It started on Sunday. I I didn't actually compete in that one because I've never played Mario Maker before. I've played plenty of the different Mario Brothers games. I'm I'm sure. (laughs) I would imagine I could play the game because you're just playing Mario, right? I think you'd do really well. Uh, I think that if you had to play one of the two Marios that I think you're less likely to have played, Mario 3D Land or New Super Mario Brothers, you would accidentally wall jump and be like, what is going on? I don't I, understand I've, this. I've played uh, the new Super Mario Brothers, which was a oh, okay. DS game, I believe, something like that. Yeah. At DS least initially. And Wii? Yeah, yeah. Maybe? So, so oh, I've, I've sure. played that one before as well. Okay, cool. Um, but uh, yeah, but the, the old they, ones feel just about right, like you remember them. Yeah, they took the top eight. They had it on stream, which I I feel like was was one of the best produced streams they had. That was I, great. I forget the name of the commentators that they had. No, but they were they were pretty knowledgeable about Mario and about games in general, and they were excited to be there. Beyond that, so I want to say they were commentator you want uh, uh, GDQ um, commentators as well. So so they they knew exactly what they were up to. Um, had experience streaming Mario Maker specifically. Um, they took the top eight, and the top eight included Arthur beside me to the left, uh, Chris Wilson and Daniel Wilson, whom we've already discussed, Dylan Smith, whom we've already discussed, um, one adult and two... Uh, three. three younger kids. Three younger kids, I would say less than 13. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... We had one side of the bracket, which was one adult and the free play oh, side. They, would, oh, no. they randomized the uh, which players would play each other right. per round. Everyone drew one of eight cards, and that would tell you who your opponent was. Right. And so the first round... So it was bracketed 1v1 best time, or best completion yes. rate. single elimination, yes. eight-person bracket. And the way it was is they would get a new level each single round was brand new, no one had seen it before, one player goes behind the stage, hides himself, has uh, earphones on so he can't hear, it's like a game show, and then he, uh, the first player does it, the second player rolls through, and they have a time attack level uh, battle on a game that they have never seen before. That sounds cool. Um, first one was two, two <clears throat> of the kids playing, I didn't get to see it, one of the kids won. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we missed that one entirely. Uh, the, second, the second matchup was the Wilson brothers eliminating each other, which, right. ooh. <laughs> oh, the Wilsons got yes, Yikes. and Chris, Chris for his uh, for his part, he didn't even know he had qualified. I looked at the list because <laughs> I was like, I know these guys. Uh, like, I, clearly, I know at least 
four of the people on this list. So so let me see them. I'll go make sure that they show up for their their matches on time. Chris was on the list. He had no idea he qualified. He's like, I'm not even good at that game. Right. But you know, if Chris Wilson says he's not that good at a game, yeah, he's he's probably only put like 50, 60 hours. Into exactly. This. Exactly. He's terrible at it. Um, so he and Daniel played. Daniel prevailed. Um, Dylan got to play against uh, the uh, the adult player that wasn't wasn't in a free play shirt. Nice. So uh, I believe the adult player elected to go second. So Dylan promptly walk up to the stage and set a world record on a level he has never played before. It's not too surprising. At this moment, I thought that Dylan was going to win the whole tournament. Well, I mean, that's, that's it, That was impressive. the best performance, I thought. Like, uh, that so, right there. so are you going to tell me that the, the adult player didn't, didn't set a new new world record? He was not no. able to break the freshly minted world right. record that he walked out to in All a right. game he had never seen before. And that is absurd. Um, the I'll, I'll move forward to the the Dylan versus uh, uh, Daniel matchup. After oh, and that. then I played a child and won. Right. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> congratulations. Way to go. Arthur had the beat up on a small <laughs> child bracket <laughs> on stage, nonetheless. Yes, on stage, on stream, and he waxed those little kids. Man, crying to their moms. Now he he respectfully played the game as you might hope. And was ultimately prevailing over the little children. Yeah, and I, I gave them both a handshake and said, "Good job. I hope have fun, etc." You know, I right. <laughs> now go and home. They, and they never played Mario yes. Maker again. <laughs> oh no! Dreams crushed. Game over. Um, okay. Uh, I don't remember Dylan and, and and Daniel's match too well. Do you? Daniel won. I do remember that. It and was, I know, I know it was Arthur pretty- was like. <laughs> yeah, I thought that Dylan was going to win the whole thing. Daniel won. I thought he'd be an easier opponent to beat in the last round for whatever reason. So I was I was rooting for Daniel, uh, just because the previous time I mean, Dylan set a world record, and before right. that he was the number one right qualifier. He was yeah. The only right. guy that did better than me in the original, and that was the only reason I knew it was, it was close. Anyway, Daniel and Dylan played a. Because the, the one that Dan, Dylan set a world record on was a hard map. It w- had tricks in it. It had things you don't see in a normal game. Little switches that are being magically affected by a turtle bouncing back and forth. Yeah, so, so it had a whole bunch of jumps where you would go had on-off blocks where they'd have red or blue. And you have to jump before your red one dis- is destroyed to the blue one and then to the red one to the blue one and back and forth over it. Yeah, someone had invented me- and, mechanics for this game. Yeah, it was... It was a really interesting map, and uh, I thought that was one of the better ones that they had for the competition. Right. Uh, it was it was fun. It was challenging, but it was also not so long or so hard that it would really get in the way. And and Daniel, Daniel and Dylan had one that was more gimmick based. There was some spikes that would come up in a timed fashion. It was one long like run through. I remember. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Daniel ultimately prevails. They go on to yeah. the finals. And, and, and I, in the meantime, fought another child. Right, right. <laughs> then it was just Daniel. Arthur with the hard bracket over there. <laughs> right. <laughs> little child, little child, little child, little child. Daniel, Daniel, having prevailed over Spring Series champion Chris Wilson, his own brother. Right. And over Dylan Smith. Tough bracket for In Daniel. Mario Maker 2. World record holder for <laughs> Mario Maker 2. Faces off in the finals against noted child killer Arthur Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur's just up there on stage like, is this supposed to be hard? I don't, I don't now, know. I can go to Arthur for commentary. On actually being the player, but I want to tell you my dis- my experience watching this madness. <laughs> so they go to a level, right? And it's a brand new level. No one's seen it before. Uh, Arthur's up first. D- uh, Daniel is behind stage, um, covered all up. Uh, me and Chris and Dylan are all watching, and Arthur just goes ham. He is holding B and pressing forward and flying through this level. It's as if he's practiced the level seventy thousand times. He jumps and hits. Every coin at full sprint. He hits every jump. He reacts to everything. He rockets through the level. I don't think he set a world record, but obviously it's one that you can go straight (laughs) forward through. And he's done in the blink of an eye. Walks off the stage, drops the mic. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) Daniel's like, oh, cool. This is awesome. I just had to, you know, I've been running the gauntlet all day and now I have to deal with this. (laughs) Yeah. uh, I, I, I don't even know what he thought as... Well, I mean, probably not much because he was behind the security <laughs> right. curtain he with had no the idea. headset right. on. He did not they get... They put like a black hood on you when you're behind. Is yeah. That... <laughs> yeah, there's no way he actually equaled that. He did his best. He he got a good time, as you expect someone would. But he didn't He didn't know the trick of like go full blast right. and, and just murder everything. No fear. Just go yeah, for yeah. it. But uh, Arthur, 
What was your strategy? How did you get to do that? <laughs> well, I was thinking beforehand that I was just going to take a gamble and assume that I could get through this whole level. It was a Mario 3 style level, and that's a game that I've played a few iterations of over the years. And I, I figured I could hopefully get through everything without just slamming into something stupid and hitting a spike and dying. And I did. Uh, there was a continuation point in the middle, but after... So the first part is a uh, auto, not auto scroll, is a uh, like the, the airship ship. stages, yeah, yeah, airship stage. like in like in Mario, Mario 3. Three, and there was one cannonball that I was sure was going to kill me, and then I jumped off of it, and I'm like, oh, awesome, and right. that was the only moment of it. of consternation in the whole thing for me. I just ran forward. Then the second part, there were a few. Uh, I don't really want to say puzzles because it was two pow blocks, and it's like, okay, I have to hit both these pow blocks. And I, I hit everything on the screen. screen. And that was it. And I'm some. I'm thinking to myself, wow, that was a really easy level. I, I think that was the easiest level of this whole competition. For uh, the finals. Wonder, wonder how Daniel's gonna do. And I'm sitting there, and he walks forward and he pauses for a second. He looks, then he jumps, then he walks forward, he pauses, he looks. And you were like, it's over. All right, I've already yep. won. <laughs> yeah, everybody knew it was over. And and it was actually. I felt like that was a very well designed level. The reason yeah, you blew great. through it is because it was very intuitively designed. Exactly. They had coins show, marking all the jumps. Uh. And so if you followed the path of the coins, and, and it wasn't made by a jerk, at some point, you know, like the last jump, there could have been like a hidden block that you'd mm-hmm. just bounce into and die or something. And I was worried that maybe that would have happened. But fortunately for me, it was just follow the coins and you win. And so, you just do it fast and you're fine. Mario Maker ends... Arthur wins a Switch. I got a Switch and a $100 gift card and no trophy. No trophy at all. None. Nothing to bring and, and <laughs> put in front of the, the free play offices. No, sir. Just a Switch. But and, I'm very happy with the prize. And an interview where we were all giggling when you mentioned Dina. And oh, she's been making me very hard levels. Like, uh, <laughs> Oh, I so see, I see. I, so I bought him the game for her birthday. Here. He's, and she, he's kind of like design bagging his, well, his experience here. He's like, literally all my girlfriend and I ever do is she makes hard levels and then I beat them. And, and that's it, it. That's like, that's it. And then me and Dylan and Chris and Daniel are all in the front row of the audience <laughs> just laughing our butts off because, oh, someone's got a girlfriend. And yeah, so it was a No, it, it, it's been the time. most fun just because she makes like stupidly hard levels and I go through them and it should make me more. And uh, I've seen a lot of stuff playing the game. And yeah. the, the last level, one of the indications that it wasn't going to be a particularly hard level was that I want to say 20% of the people that had played the level had passed it, that had played it thus far. And that's a pretty high percentage. And that's kind of why I was willing to gamble on just running straight through it. If it had been far lower than I wouldn't have. The, that's, a, that's a meta I never would have considered. Yeah, yeah, the second stage that I did against one of the little kids was a, uh, a level <laughs> that had 0.1% passage. And Whoa. so for that one, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take this slow and cautious and do everything I can. You had to have Yoshi at the end. Then you just watch the kid fall. fall. <laughs> and, well, and you were like, ha, 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 ha. It was actually a water level, so you had to go down, get Yoshi, and come out. And I, I took a hit from this giant wriggler that was flying all over the place that you couldn't do anything about. And so I went down to get Yoshi, and I accidentally found a star, which made it to where I could just effortlessly do the second half of the level rather than have to dodge anything on the way out. I don't think that I would have died or anything, and I'm sure that I still would have won, but that that completely defeated the purpose of that level because it's in a hidden box. And uh, I, I the guy running the tournament said if he'd known that there was a star down there, he would have picked a different level. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's the thing. You were set up for the most embarrassing possible losses. So, I mean, Unfortunate for me, it didn't all, happen. All you kids, only got the most embarrassing like, possible like, wins. Like this whole podcast mm-hmm. would just be making fun of you for losing to a kid um, uh-huh. if you had lost. Sadly, so. it was a single limb tournament, so I could only lose to one kid instead of all three. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, so where does the switch sit now? It is in my room. <laughs> He's like, it's still in my car. And I gone home. I, very, very warm in the sun. <laughs> I haven't purchased anything for it yet. I also got a hundred dollar gift card for GameStop. I'm gonna use it on a uh, a pro Spice, controller Spice and yeah, yeah. Yeah. Use, <laughs> use it fast. We we have whole podcasts about this whole yeah. thing. Oh well, <laughs> no, no. I mean, GameStop. GameStop was a sponsor no, of Let's Play, and uh, yeah, yeah, GameStop uh, is local company here, so. Local you may have heard of it. Thing. You right. may have heard of it. Yeah, but they have we, a few locations still. We saved it the other day. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah. All right. So, but that was that Mario was Maker the first, fun second, third, fourth. We're all free play. All free play. Kirby's Air Ride. <laughs> oh, was this like this was this? Okay, what version of Kirby was it? This Air is like Cube. this is like a this is a GameCube game that's uh, I I'm not sure if it has network player for it's a uh, linked. 
on I, okay. when they work were okay, got it. Multi-screen, but uh, it has some some features that are kind of like Grand Theft Auto, where you can like steal new rides that are better. And nice. there's different modes, and I don't know what mode this tournament was taking place in. I'd never played the game, <laughs> and when these guys were playing, I'm like, this is the only time I'm ever going to get to get any lunch today. So. Yeah, so so for my part, um, I was downstairs because at this point, word is out that we're winning every single tournament. Right. So um, I am managing the tournament downstairs, making sure that my uh, my friends don't get DQ'd because they're upstairs playing Kirby's Air Ride. I mean, they weren't going to get DQ'd or on stage anyway. Um, but... Uh, I wasn't there to actually see it. I will tell you the results. Dylan Smith, first place. Some nice. of the Wilsons got second and third. First, <laughs> second, and third. All of us, we have the trophy somewhere. Hyper fighting. How did that go? Virtual boy hyper fighting. Well, let's set a little background. So Let's Play has been doing this for many years. Mm-hmm. Like they, they were working on it. They, I think it was just playable, the first Let's Play. They weren't going to run a tournament. They were just so excited to have it playable and be able to project it yes. on the screen. Street Fighter 2 was not released for the virtual boy planned. Right. Not released, and so now they've. This is like the you know third maybe year or fourth year of running some kind of tournament on it. it also, there's no link cable that was officially li- released for the virtual. So they boy. have to build one. So that's the, just yeah. it's, it's, is it like mirroring the screens? Is that what's going on? Uh, or, the screen is mirrored. Yes. Well, it's not. It's not flipped, but right. yes, it's it's on both of the displays. There are two linked together virtual boys, and we were both. Now it was supposed to be on a fight stick. They forgot the fight stick. It was Whoa, supposed, there's a virtual boy fight stick. Someone released a virtual boy fight stick. Yes. <gasps> oh, someone. Um, thank you. They had to. They forgot about them. Uh, they also were supposed to have this on their custom hyper fighting game. They forgot about that as well. Oh, yeah, they, they didn't have the game with them the first day. Right. I just heard there was a hyper fighting tournament. I thought I might be able to sneak away and get a, get a few games of Street Fighter in in between my everything else I was doing. And that now weekend. he can no longer see the color red. It's true. It's true. So so it's a homebrew version. We've actually talked about it before. There's some janky stuff that happens in what you might expect is a, a homebrew I version. Mean, some is an understatement. Watching this hide, game play is so weird. And you funny. can hide behind the elephants on Dalsum stage. <laughs> Ryu's stage appears to be from the Alpha series. Um, the mechanics are wild. Um I, I saw it briefly and then I lost my vision because it was indeed a virtual boy. If you haven't, if you don't recall, it's it's Nintendo's worst system ever made. It might be the <laughs> worst system ever made. Was it supposed to be virtual reality? They're goggles. It's supposed I to be guess. like three D ish. I guess it's supposed it is to be 3D. Uh, you know I mean, like it's Telero Boxer kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you stare into this goggle that will permanently remove your vision. It's just red lights staring directly at you. Um, the final ended up being me. And Dylan Smith. Nice. And we were playing Blanca, which was red on a black background. And he was playing Blanca, which was red on a black background. So we had the awkward first round where I guess I won. And I was just like, oh. Yeah. Which one was that? And Dil- Dylan's like, you won, you won. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, we've played, we've played Street Fighter 2 a time or two at free play. Right. So everybody sort of knew what they were doing if it was normal right, street fighter yeah. 2 but they forgot their sticks so we're we there's two d pads the, on either side yeah the virtual boy controller wasn't the most intuitive either right so if you press left or up on the right d pad you get punches and if you press <laughs> down or right you get kicks on the d pad it was somewhat counterintuitive and nobody else saw this in the world so i will tell you dylan smith for no good reason, was throwing shuriukens and fireballs and hadoukens. He was trying to throw super moves in there. He told me his thumb was hurting after that tournament for, you know, a good several hours. (laughs) And I believe him. I don't know why he was going through that much effort. I just jumped in with Blanca and hit roundhouse like any good Blanca player would. And uh, And, uh, and this is hyper fighting, not ST, correct? Uh, it's 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 hyper fighting ish. It's hyper fighting ish. <laughs> this is right. Street Fighter. Street, some kind it's, of it's, speed. It's clearly some Street Fighter Two inspired game. It looks very much like Street Fighter Two. Like it is Street Fighter right, Two. Right, right, right. It's it's as much Street Fighter Two as Rainbow Edition is Street Fighter Two. I would All say. right, sounds good. Um, so yeah, that was the thing. Uh, I literally lost my vision for 45 minutes. Like, I was not kidding. When I'm I'm literally, like, holding Arthur's shoulder after that tournament. Like, please lead me around and tell me if you see my friend because I've lost her and I can't see. So, <laughs> but I, I won. I won. Dylan got second. Ray got third. Team free play is first, second, third again. And I get to mention Ray Upshaw on a podcast, which nice. Ray um, makes everybody happy. Did some neat stuff at this event. He decided he was going to beat Dylan's high score 
on the puzzle bobble. The the winner wins a cabinet, the cabinet of puzzle bobble. Yeah, this Neo Geo. And after Dylan sets this high score of almost six million after his like third play, he's like, ah, it's good enough, and he left. The uh, the the previous high score, not on counting Friday. my own, was fifty thousand. He <laughs> had six million. Yeah, that's Ray good. decides he's going to spend this weekend trying to beat he this high score. He wants that cabinet. All yes, day sir. Saturday, all day Sunday. He must have spent 18 hours there. And <laughs> Do you know, Ray, you know it's true. <laughs> and he's just yelling at the cabinet the whole time. <laughs> and and he keeps getting close. And for a while, I'm like being his, like, I don't know, his his sidekick. I'm telling him, I'm telling him, you had to knock like, down at least 17 it, man. Uh, attached bear, uh, uh, bubbles to get to get the million, 1.3 million bonus points. And so I would tell him 14, 15, 16, 17, break it. And then I would tell him, all right, just destroy the re- less revel, less rest of the level, <coughs> finish the level, finish the level, finish the level, and then he would lose time to time. And I'd be like, Ray, here's what you're not doing. You're trying to get 2.6 million points rather than finishing the game once you're already like halfway to the, the high score. Just keep going. And uh, at one point, Ray's like, I can't wait to win this cabinet because then I'm going to sell it. And I'm like, you're not even going to keep the cabinet? <laughs> and he's like, no. And I'm like, hey, Dylan, what are you going to do? He's like, oh, I'm going to put it in my apartment. I got I got a nice spot for him. Like, All right, I'm on Team Dylan now. <laughs> <laughs> so I know Dylan. Dylan took it down. Dylan was Dylan was prepared to put another $13 million on there if, 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 <laughs> if it came that, to it. That thing ever got endangered. This, this back and forth, well, it's really just Ray trying. Goes all the way till 6 p.m., the actual close of the festival. On Sunday. On Sunday. <laughs> um, our friend Darren is the guy who manages the arcades throughout the entirety of Let's Play Game Expo. He's on the board, and I had to go to him and be like, could you please end this tournament? <laughs> Just go declare a winner. And he said, well, I know I know one of your guys, want, uh, you want one of your guys to win. I'm like, no, no, it's not that. It's, Both of them were my guys. It's Just long. <laughs> if you don't tell Ray it's over, he's still going to be there. And indeed, he would still be there right now, grinding because away. I don't think he'd ever get that damn score. Right. <laughs> he may, he may not. Six million points. It's <laughs> Day seventeen, right? He's even more haggard. Like he he got pretty close a couple times actually. He was half million points off, and so then he was, he was so disappointed. At right? that, so when he, he was that close, trying, I'm like, Ray, trying. you can get the high score. Just play the game. Don't go for combos. Don't try to get eighteen bear, uh, bubbles to fall. Just just play the game, and you will win. Yeah. So <laughs> he that wins. ends. Dylan wins. <laughs> he gets the cabinet first, second, and third. Team free play again. Uh, Dylan immediately gets bombed with messages from people like Michael Beltran and the Grill Master trying to buy his cabinet, but they, the Neo Geo. he wants none of it. He actually wants the cabinet, and I'm happy about that. Right. That's Likewise, a, that's I, a good I'm result. Way more happy if someone wants to keep the prize than sell it. Yeah. Um, then we had. I guess we have to go to the main event, right? The Wizard Tournament? That Let's was see. the big one. We skipped NHL because that didn't happen. NHL oh. actually didn't happen. We were all sitting there waiting. <laughs> but, but when when they're just looking at just the three of us wanting to take another trophy, they they're were like, like, you know what? Please, team just, free play. Just, I mean, just we could mail it to you. Chill out. Uh, <laughs> then there was Tetris, which was kind Tetris. of a Tetris yeah. I didn't hear about. And if I had, I would have entered. Yeah. I really liked that it version was a, of Tetris. It was a little bit more separated than the rest because yes. it was like a qualifier for an upcoming event. I, that so. would Right. I would have liked to have participated if I'd known about it. And I, I'm not saying that would have qualified or anything. I can say that somebody maxed out the score. Yeah. Nine, 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 nine. I would not have gotten that score. Yeah. <laughs> then nor, nor would I. It's NES Tetris. It's the classic one. So, yeah, that's well, a qualifier for the world championships that they do mm-hmm. every year at Let's Play Game Expo. classic one, huh? Yeah, I believe winner, winner wins. I'm going to have to go talk to Atari about their Tetris. Well, I guess there's a lot of classic ones. <laughs> there's two. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think of the the PC one back in the day with the custom background. That so there's, there's a lot of that. That was a Tetris. Yeah. Um, there's the original original one with the ASCII graphics. I've but, seen that. I mean, it's at- pretty cool. Atari and the actual Nintendo version were pretty side by side, primarily because Tingen released you know the, yeah, the Atari yeah. version. So it be, then became. Really, I like the Tingen version. I, I, it's it's fun. It's got two players, but I think that the Nintendo version is honestly the better game. How it, dare you, sir? Because it doesn't have trash. I know what I said. I think the, the Nintendo version is kind of boring uh, from like a, a normal game player standpoint, and the Tension version has a lot. But I can see why, from a competitive standpoint, you might prefer the Nintendo one. But like, if you're just gonna pick one to like have at a party, never. 
Never well, picked the, the Nintendo one. Yeah, yeah, if you only have one, you've got a one-player Tetris that you know is a game that's going to take you 45 minutes to play. Or you have a two-player game that you can actually have some fun with, with yep. a couple people. Or you can go to free play and play Atari Tetris on a cocktail, or that's Atari true. Tetris on a stand-up, or Tetris Grandmaster on a Big Blue. Yep. So, good times. New art on that one, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, like cool. It. I saw it today. It it's really it's good. nice. It's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Tetris happened. The Wizard Tournament was the main tournament. That was a multi-game tournament. Uh, we discussed it briefly on the podcast uh, la- last week. Yeah, so the the premise here is they're going to bring a... Bu- I mean, kind of like the original Wizard uh, video Armageddon tournament from mm-hmm. the movie The Wizard, um, where you're going to have to show a mastery at a bunch of games to, to advance, to move on, and to eventually mm-hmm. you know maybe play on the big stage. That's the concept. Uh, as I mentioned in the last podcast like it, it's hard to balance a tournament like that especially if you have never done in a tournament like that before so just kind of at the onset i i've been in many of these tournaments i've run some myself i knew what to expect it was it was it was lovingly handcrafted it was right. that yeah it was earnestly made i've seen i've been a part of some of these tournaments that are not such um so it was a good tournament but like balance i don't think it was ever going to happen well one of the things i think we found out and that anyone who's tried to run these types of tournaments is the more cool you make it, the smaller your audience ultimately is going to be Mm -hmm. like, um, if you just put slapped Tetris on a tournament, you get like a big group of players who are like, Oh, Tetris. Right. But if you're like, you're going to play up to 10 random games from the classics and we're going to, and they gave us the list. Right. And and we'll tell you which games, but you know, there's going to be obscure stuff. You might not have ever like, and you're like, wow, this is really going to try to like test the top gamer. Right. All every time we plan something like that, we're like, yes, this is going to be awesome. But then no one shows up. No one care, cares that much about it because it's so diverse. And, and to their credit, they got over 200 people to enter this tournament. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there was there was a nice turnout. Like, n- not everyone made it to the final rounds, obviously, but a whole lot of people entered. And they, yeah. They, they went and played their three rounds. Is that what qualifying was? You put three score, four, four, yeah, four, four scores, four, four. four scores. Um, the um, first round was. RC Pro Am. Uh, was it Contra? No, that was second round. I'm, I'm coming up with a whole bunch of games. Wasn't the there like round. a Game Boy game that you played on? Yes, yes, Kirby. Kirby's Adventure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Pocky and Rocky. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which I had never, I never played Kirby or Pocky and Rocky before that. Day. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised you never played Kirby. It was a pretty prevalent game. It might my, be my family wrong. couldn't afford the Game Boy. <laughs> it, it happens. Yeah. Uh, the fourth game, I can't remember mm. either. It was a fourth game. So not, uh, we've already said RC. So right, RC Prime was not. The it was game. like a major F- game. F-Zero? It was, was like, No, no, that was the second round. It was yeah. a big game too. A popular. Yeah, that sounds right. Game. That sounds sounds very right. So uh, there were four games, five minutes each. Um, cumulative score on each, which was the issue with the balance. So which one? Which game became the, ultra the only overpowered? Game, the only game that mattered was man. I can't remember. Do you remember? Uh, the. F- it might have been. It might have been Kirby. Was Final Fight? The first uh, final, yes, Final Fight was yeah. on there. Okay. Final Fight was not the game that mattered because but everybody the, had the, the same score. The game that mattered was Kirby's. The game that mattered was Kirby. If you knew how to play it, which was uh, thank you to Daniel for finding this strategy for us and sharing it with the class, <laughs> was yeah. uh, basically to get to the second level and there was a curry that spawned and to you just farm blew it. it up and yeah. then you, yeah, and you you're out of go, curry and go kill and yourself. You, and No, you went back to the door. The, the curry was in the door. No, 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 no it, the curry doesn't respawn. Oh, it doesn't? Yeah, okay. so, so you just keep, you keep bringing yourself back in. You farm it. Until you're out of curry, you go kill yourself, you grab some more curry, because now it's respawned, and then you repeat into infinity. Uh, so yeah, that, that was the, the difference maker. If you knew, knew how to do that, then everybody's advanced into the next round. And honestly, the top 50 went on, so everybody who kind of knew how to play Final Fight or kind of knew how to Pocky Rocky, Pocky Rocky moved on. I found a spot in Pocky and Rocky that got me the top score in that one. Yeah, no one, no one, knew, no one knows how to re- recreate what you did. No, it was weird. Yeah. <laughs> so congrats to Pocky and Rocky champion Arthur Williams. That's a game that I have... Finally, played finally something you can be proud of. of. You beat up little children at Mario Maker, and yeah. sure you got a Switch, but Pocky and Rocky World <laughs> Champion right here. Uh, the second round was was that F Zero and Contra? Yeah, it, it was fifty, and they, top fifty, and then they they did. Uh, yeah, it was F Zero Contra. I want to say they did a third game as well, not I, Hogan's Alley. I think. Okay, so after that. Double Dragon. The, th- the third no? round was Double Dragon know. Mario World. Tetris, Tetris. There we go. Tetris, F Zero, nice. and Contra, and Contra. So um, the game F-Zero that mattered did not matter at all, right? Uh, at all. Yeah. Dylan Smith put a world class score up as he is one to do because there's in the five minute time period you are going to get this many laps or right. I guess game over, but it's like 
a difficulty check of can you play F Zero at all? Because you're playing it, on the yeah. easiest difficulty level on the easiest maps, where it's just going a circle twice and Di- then. So yeah, everyone did know. the same thing there. Right. Yeah. Dylan Smith was looking for the world record. He got nine thousand points and put up a world class score. Got, I was intentionally driving off the course, g- giggling and drinking my uh, drink at the same time, and got five thousand points. So. No harm, no foul there. Really didn't matter. And uh, meanwhile, uh, the the since they're just adding the points together, the contra score was in the sixty thousands rather than you know somewhere in five to ten range. Mm-hmm. And Tetris was again about fifty. But the variance was huge. Yeah. RNG on Game Boy Tetris is quite large. So, My uh, score was pretty good on Game Boy Tetris yeah, because fifty thousand, sixty thousand, something like that. And there I were think. there were players that were getting less than ten thousand. Yeah, and it was just giving me a whole bunch of longs, and right. I was playing well enough. <laughs> All the four slots. Can you, can, you, <laughs> yeah. can you manage to make lines out of that? So I was I was fine with that, and right. then then uh, yeah, they Contra, took the top. Contra was Contra. You, the, the Konami code was banned. Yeah, but it's only a five minute run, so, if so you, it doesn't if, matter. Like. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I, I believe I, I was one of the top score. The, the the usual suspects were the top scorers. It would we could have let them have the Konami code. That just means infinite lives to to do it. We were, we were racing anyway. I mean, so. we didn't use lives, so yeah, it didn't right. really matter. I think I died. No, I didn't die. I accidentally picked up the flamethrower, yeah. and so the second oh, no. boss was it's a not pain, as bad as but pick, I got past him. It's not as bad as picking up the the flamethrower and ghosts and goblins. That's that's the oh, one no. where no no <laughs> restart the game. Let's Might forfeit as well. this forfeit this quarter. Uh, they took the top 24 there into the next round where it was Mario World and Double Dragon. Or Mario World and Irrelevant because the top score possible, like the joke in the, or the joke, the famous line from the wizard is. You he got, got 50,000 Double Dragon? How'd you do it? Well, he did. Uh, everybody in the tournament was doing it in less than five minutes. Yeah, I got 60 ish thousand. I think I was the number one in Double Dragon, and all you do is you headbutt people. Right. That's it. That's Just it. press forward twice. That's it. You nice. can't replace those points with anything else. That's the top <laughs> score possible. Super Mario World. Um, how much have you played Super Mario World much, Corey? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. The first level. You you you're in Yoshi's house. Technically, you skip that one. the second level. The second uh, level. There's Yoshi's <laughs> Island one and Yoshi's Island two. If you go to the right. Then you go to Yoshi's Island 2. Yeah, you jump on the Red Koopa. It teaches you to grab the Red Koopa and throw it into this whole line of Red Koopas. And it goes 200, 400, 800, 800, 800, 800 one up. 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000, Oh, no, I see. Yeah, yeah, so yeah you see where we're going. You, you can beat, hit start and select. And, and start the level over again. You get to beat the level once to do that. And that's like a legit speedrunish level. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it's just, hey, how fast can you get the points in this level? Yes. So, yeah, it was five straight minutes of grab the turtle, throw the turtle into more turtles, hit start, select, repeat. Over and over and over again. Um, we all knew that this was the strategy. Except going for Ray. In. Well, except for Ray. <laughs> Ray did not. Uh, you need to, you want to go last in this style right. of yeah, tournaments. Yeah, we all wanted to do Mario World last so that we wouldn't give it away. We all tried to. Um, so somebody else on, in the venue was aware, at least in some level of at some level of how to do this. Yeah, the guy sitting next to us was actually a speedrunner. Uh, right. So well, he, he well, there's a, the a person in Ray's round as well. Oh, there was because Ray came to me. He's like, I've got a strategy for you, and we were like, what, Is it? What kind of know? Shoot the turtle. <laughs> we didn't even bother. We we just knew. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so myself, Arthur. The whole team. We were there. We were in the last run. We just blew it up. Um, that was that was the imbalance that we were worried about. Um, if you knew that strategy, it was more important than any other thing in the entire tournament. So uh, everybody had to kind of try. It never went to head to head, which we were anticipating. At w- which point, I would have been able to lose. And uh, so it was. It was everybody had to try. Uh, Daniel Wilson went set a. Daniel Wilson was actually the one who got the, the even beat your squad on Double Dragon, and yeah. then he didn't. Do, okay, yeah, he, he did. didn't scum Super Mario World good enough. <laughs> no, uh, me and him had the same problem where we were both trying to pause the game in between when the eight thousand shell got hit and the one up shell got hit. Yeah, and it actually takes a little bit of time for the score to tick up on your score. Yeah, so I was a hundred thousand points behind everyone else. Same with Daniel. Uh, they but it didn't the really finalists. matter. It was yeah, it because. was because. Yeah, it was Dylan Smith, Chris Wilson, and myself. <laughs> I have frustratingly made the final. All right, all right. So, so lots, he, of, lots of team free play kind of it, milling once again, about sweep. We already know it's going to be first, second, third, all team free play. I guess at that point. Okay, what were the prizes for this tournament? 
Uh, a trip for two to Universal Studios was the grand prize, as well as a bunch of w- the wizard swag. They had um, the Luke Edwards, the the wizard, the right, title yeah, character yeah. from the wizard um, there. Uh, they had the screenwriter. They had the producer there. So all the stuff was autographed by them. So laser discs, a very familiar <laughs> looking um, uh, cassette, a uh, video cassette, uh, the screener copy, some other memorabilia like that. Uh, there was m- less memorabilia, but things like the cassette for second place and um, trophies for top three places. Nice, nice. So, uh, so you go to the finals, you're on the big the stage, finals, yeah. stream. They're trying to make it kind of like the wizard at the end where you've got like the screens, you got the players at the podium. Yeah, and stuff. there was some confusion at the venue. Um, on how they were, they were, the plan was to roll out the red carpet during the middle of uh, of Christian's um, video Armageddon Yellowthon, and uh, they didn't misheard him, I guess, because they just rolled out the red carpet immediately and taped it down. <laughs> they were supposed to connect the RF cables, um, but they'd already done that early as well, <laughs> right? So, so it was quite quite plain to see, even unavoidable to see that our final game was not going to be the Nintendo World Championships, but. Mega Man 1. Yeah, I was actually oh. kind of expecting Nintendo World Championships for this. I thought right. everyone was. Like, I thought that was kind of like the I assumption. mean, we were ready. I mean, I'm told that there are two copies of it at the Video Game Museum. Right. I don't I don't know if that's true or not. I know well, of sure one other copy in too, Dallas. In DFW. There, there probably are. Because mm-hmm. I, I know of one other copy in Dallas. Oh, it is It is classically one. Uh, is it the most valuable NES game? I think it's it is. There. Yeah, it's, like, it's worth it's, more of the stadium events. It's yeah. not an official release. Right. It's so. only made for the Nintendo World Championships. It makes sense to, to run at the end of one of these yeah. types of events. And the, I've heard it threatened to be run as the mystery game at the end of one of these events many times. So I've practiced yeah. it over and over and over again. I'm ready. Whenever whenever it finally does <laughs> mystery yeah, events, they're going to be like, aren't you shocked? It's Nintendo World Championships. And I'll be like, finally, I've been practicing this all this time. <laughs> yeah. like I think everyone kind of expects it to at some point be the finale game for one right. of these. Um, instead, it was Mega Man 1, the only Mega Man game with scoring before <laughs> they realized that scoring in a game yeah, where you can yeah. walk left and right is not a really good right. idea. Yeah. It, it, Early on, I mean, it has a lot more arcadey roots that they got rid of for more console play for the later ones. But, you know, what you going to do? It has um, points. And the bosses give you a randomized large number of points. Right. Uh, well, that comes into play later. But, like, I, I, I've i actually competed in multi-game tournaments before. Uh, I won the Iron Man of Gaming tournament. I uh, competed in the second one. In the third one, they featured Mega Man 1 mm-hmm. in a... Five minute speed run. Is of the goal only? to kill a random enemy over and over or to beat a stage over and over? Uh, you want to be. So, the way to scum that game, which unfortunately I know, is to just find one enemy that will jump into screen without you. So, the, the rules for the first time I, I played it were you can't go left and right. And you. Um, so, you can't scroll back and forth. Right? But you can still set up a, a scenario where you probably have all played Ninja Gaiden and seen the one guy who you jumps up and you shoot him and you're like, or you slash him and you're like, sweet, I'm done. And then he just jumps right back into the screen. Well, you set up that scenario in Mega Man where there's continually one guy jumping into the screen and just right into your cannon fire. It's very, very boring. Um, every single one of us was team free play. So, <laughs> we all talked about, we all saw that what the game was. Um, we all respected the tournament. Yeah. Um, so Chris and Dylan and I talked about it, you know, moments beforehand and said, look, I myself have done this before. Uh, I, so at QuakeCon, I spent my entire time overnight playing Mega Man 1. I'm ready to go, but I don't want to win necessarily. Um, but more than that, and Dylan was the one that really spearheaded this. He did not want to scum the game on stage. Um, and I was yeah. fully with him. I was like, I don't even want to win this thing in particular. So I mean that's the big downside to almost all these high score things, right? It just it you have most to pick very game, certain most games. games you kind of walk into, and if you just started to pick all time classic games, most of them you're gonna run to a game that's just it can be gamed too easily, yeah. And it totally takes away from the spirit of the event. You wanted to see top level gameplay, top level Pac Man play is memorize the course and just recite the pattern, right? M- many of these games are recite the pattern. Um, a game like Joust, uh, we have uh, Lonnie McDonald going across the world, you know, hitting right. uh, the top score possible on every Joust machine. The majority of, of his play involves him standing at the bottom, waiting for enemies to come to him, and he presses the flap one time and kills it, and then one time and kills it. Like, it's, it's much less than you might expect having free-handed the game most of your life. 
So free handing the game is probably not the way to go if you're trying to score the most amount of points in the most efficient way possible. Right. But this was an event with, you know, a pretty substantial audience. There were 30, 40 people in the audience. Free Play sponsored it. We really wanted to like we wanted to put on a show. So so, so what these guys Dylan. what these guys did was they all picked a different robot master mm-hmm. and they went for it. And they beat the robot master, went on to the next one. It's a it's a hard game too, and we're yes. all just blowing through it like it's nothing. Christian's on stage saying, uh, pay no attention to these guys. It's right. a hard game. We're just flying through it. No, it was it was fun to watch in all honesty, which is which is good because that made for a good conclusion to the tournament. Well, and so I guess let's let's jump to it. What what happened? How did it uh, end? So uh, Chris Wilson, not the the biggest pro at Mega Man, his brother Daniel Wilson would have murdered us all in our sleep. <laughs> he didn't win. He was sitting next weird. to me in the peanut gallery, lamenting and as he was, was like, I. Oh. We were not able to participate. I These was, noobs. <laughs> I was playing the game at a nice ginger place, pausing it, taking my time, hoping one of my buddies would come flying by me and win a trip to California. Uh, the RNG, it just random dice rolls. How much bonus you get for blowing up a boss? 90,000 and 90,000. That's fairly good. That's, I think, the most you can get. 100,000 and 100,000 would technically be the most. Okay. Yeah. So that, I rolled two fives in my dice roll. Uh, Dylan Smith rolled two ones. He got 50,000 and 50,000, and he finished 40,000 points shy of me, much to wow. all of our chagrin. Um, so I won. I'm the champion. I'm the you're wizard the champion. Wizard. Great. Yeah. I remember watching you on the stage after you won, and you're like, "Oh, uh oh." It it's was ha- it really happens. hard right, to like, right, guys. Yes, because I'm excited. I w- I'm I'm happy. I won. I guess, but also like, I really wanted. <laughs> that was not why I was there. That was not why I was there. And then it kind of turned into um, a free playathon for a few. Minutes. Well, the whole the whole event was a free right. playathon. Everybody had their shirts on. Team free play, first, second, third, and like eight of the top ten. Um, it was absurd. The whole weekend was absurd. Uh, we got to meet Luke Edwards. Um, I uh, I wanted to make sure, um, you know, Dylan wanted to keep his his cabinet. I'm not much of a collector myself, so I wanted to make sure everybody there, you know, got something. So I, I was I was literally giving away pieces of the the swag. We have the uh, the signed copy That's of the signed wizard VHS, nice, right there. Um, I think the laser disc was probably the coolest of these things that you got, just because it's around here somewhere. I, I think it's actually back there. I could grab it. <laughs> I think they got a laser disc, and the answer is probably eBay. But that's pretty cool that it uh, exists at he all. Said, he did say eBay, and he said it took him years of, of <laughs> trying to win that eBay <laughs> oh, and, and awesome. failing. Well, that so. was really great because you showed up and you're like. I got a few copies of the wizard, and it was like, here's the Blu-ray, here's the laser disc, here's the VHS. Yeah, you yeah. got it all. Um, we got the trophy. Um, that's cool. Well, and yeah, I mean, it was really cool too because I, I possibly stage... have a trip for two to sh- to California. I'm too afraid to even ask yeah. about that. Florida, <laughs> actually. Florida. Oh. It's where they filmed the movie. Uh, no, it's where Video Armageddon was. But the kid it wanted was to go to ca- California. The California. No, the kid wanted to go to California. In California. <laughs> the, 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 the Universal Studios was definitely in California. They did not go to Florida. I have um, no idea where they're going to try to send you, so good luck. Um, I'm going I'm to internet shame him before you. <laughs> we the have to watch have this movie. To. That's what it is. The, the, it's, it's a bet. Um, we're we're gonna bet. I don't know what the wizard. All right. Yeah, we've but got, it's we've definitely there's California. There's a few copies. Right here. My um, copy is the one on VHS that I recorded <laughs> as a kid. It still has commercials. Um, but you know, at the end of the thing, at the end of the tournament, everyone was on stage talking about how you know, like free play kind of. You know, you go to free play, you play so many fun games, you learn all about like all these classic games. You all play them for fun and everything. And it was really cool to see because everyone's just kind of like, yeah. I mean, we've all been training for this our whole lives, but. Free play is kind of like what brought us together, and I thought that was really a nice touching point because it was. It's like, the truth. It's my friends, right? Like, yeah, everybody. Like we're all buddies. We we. I'm very very happy to. See, we just talked about how happy we are to have Dylan Smith win. How we would have been happy to have Ray win. Like we all we all go <laughs> we all go and play together every single day. Well, um, not to denigrate the competition, but f- everyone who's been playing at free play for years has such a wide diverse. Like background, just from free play. Not to mention, we've been before accidentally free play. training for this. Yes, it's, yeah, we've been doing all sorts of stuff where we pick random games and we want high scores, and that's exactly what you—the kind of skills you need for a tournament like this. Yeah, and we even do ignoring that, like most of us will just go and, hey, I'm going to play Missile Command today for no reason, right? right. You know, and it's it's good, it's fun. You play a few games, you try to get a better score than you got before, and then next time you're there, play something else. So yeah, I think uh, when I looked it up, it was five of seven, and they might not have actually run the NHL, so maybe five of six tournaments that were run uh free play was top three yes um, or, or better yes. or yeah <laughs> that was uh i mean all of the top three <laughs> all of. so not, not just they placed in the top three every single person in yeah. that tournament at the end was a, a free play mem- team I, free play member i've posted awesome. a picture of all the trophies just sort of lined up it was 
a ludicrous. I mean, really good weekend for um, you know, retro gaming though. Like yeah. it was it was just I mean I think Team Free Play won for what, the reasons we were saying. They've they've been training for this forever. We yeah, run tournaments sure. like this already, so very few people have the kind of experience I've, that a Team Free Play can have. I've been in a competitive um, video game environment for over 20 years, and I, I can never recall that dominant of a performance across an yeah, entire was, weekend's worth of competitions. Can you, Arthur? Uh, where everything got won everything by one place <laughs> in a show by one team. It was really interesting. The to closest watch. I can come up to is Absolute Battle Two. Uh, Empire Arcadia came, and Sanford and Yipes won almost everything, but not CVS two. <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen things like that where like California comes, like the two players from California come and wreck the whole company. We won and placed and showed in everything. It was unbelievable. But, yeah, we won literally everything, and it was a diverse range of games. In fact. I it, it, I want to I want to go ahead and give a shout oh. out to so we have a podcast listener who listened to one of our please don't open an arcade because you have no idea how hard it is podcast and decided I'm gonna open an arcade in Houston that's called Game of Dreams it, there's there are a couple of head to head set up blast cities there <laughs> right right he made sure oh, that no. they were authentic. <laughs> Because he listened to our podcast. He listened yeah. to this man right here That's at this awesome. table right now. So they are authentic. They're running Super Turbo, CPS2. They usually run Third Strike because it's a little bigger there. Um, so they ran themselves a Super Turbo tournament on the Saturday of Let's Play Game Expo in Houston and managed to get the entire like Texas region to come out and, and support. So uh, I would have been there if I were not at Let's Play Game Expo. Obviously, there yeah, he's San a, Antonio players and Austin players and Houston, of course, Dallas went. Right. Uh, and, 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 you know, the, the Game of Dreams owner, I'm sorry I'm forgetting your name at the moment, Game of Dreams owner, but uh, he's been to Free Play Richardson. He's a huge fan of Free Play. He's a huge fan of this podcast, so much so that he, he opened an arcade in Houston. So we wanted to support. As everybody in the area did, with someone who, who wants to support Super Turbo on an authentic arcade cabinet. So off we went, or off uh, six players went from the Dallas area. We take Super Turbo a little bit seriously. It's true. We Super do Turbo. have a, a very, very big community. And I think the, <laughs> the biggest thing here is in the last two or three years, every single day that someone's wanted to play Super Turbo against relatively good quality competition, they can just do it. Yeah. Uh, that, that doesn't exist everywhere. So no. uh, how did our team that went to Houston do? Six players went. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth. All free play. Four team free play. Yeah, no, I, I, I looked at it. And, you know, there was, Absurd. There were some good players in that tournament that did not make it into that top five. Um, yes, so yes. Uh, was, some people who've been playing the game since the original days. You know, friends of free play who travel out and play with us. Uh, I, In our opinion, Nick Wynn, EST 1991, the best player in the state. He did not win. He did not, not play. He did not uh, show. Really impressive performance. And, and of course, that kind of capped off a whole weekend of free play winning tournaments in different places, different locations, different games, so many every free play genre. Shirts. Um, and it is obviously really fun to see um, because that is kind of our home base. And it's always nice to have a, I mean, when someone wins a tournament with a free play shirt on, people say what's free play, right? Like that's right. the natural well, thing that follows. Well, now at this point, like we're telling you what free play right. is. Right. So, so if you go back and watch the, the, the recap of that stream, it's just, you know, people telling you to come to right. a summer turbo <laughs> event at free play in a month. And, and I think there will be plenty of people wanting revenge for that dominant performance coming to summer, Tur summer turbo just for that reason. All right. So Fingers we, ta crossed. we talked about the free play dominance, but really quick, Last thing for the podcast for this time. What was your favorite game in the arcade at Let's Play that's not out on a free play floor right now? Oh, Gals Panic Two, the end. <laughs> that, Next, that was that was definitely Kelsey's too. I, uh, yeah, she, I could not pull her off that game. All right, Arthur, uh, Hope Don't Can maybe Fist in the North Star. I really like the game. It's fun. It's uh, I love it on that big blue for like it's so yeah, it it's so right goofy there. and ridiculous. It, it's um, a it's silly really, game. It's really and fun. It, to see. The better you get at it, the more hilarious of a game it becomes. It needs the NBA on NBC theme. Yes, <laughs> that makes it better. That makes it better. It's um, got the drag basketball infinite. Ooh. Well, and I'll go with Death Race just because I love the idea of a game in the late seventies in black and white with stick figures being controversial for being too violent, especially in the modern world. Because um, your whole goal is to run people over, but like it's not graphic. And yeah, it's like, who cares? Well, it, I mean, it's like originally people getting all upset about Berserk, where you're running through hallways as a stick figure and you're shooting something. I didn't know that people got upset about that. Yeah, that Berserk, Death Race, all these games that had any kind of simulated fairness, violence. Berserk did kill people. Right, he, right. He did Destroy run all humans, is that it? <laughs> he did run around. 
and shoot <laughs> stuff. All right, so that's this podcast. Uh, that's kind of our Let's Play tournament wrap up, um, and mostly just a you know team free play hooray event type thing. I mean, great podcast. We will remember to subscribe. Remember to come check out free play, and we're gonna pause and record another one talking about some more cool stuff. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Thanks, guys. All right, love you guys. <laughs> Bye.